the X670 chipset is very messed up right now. Because it seems like you can only get motherboards that are comfortably in that sub $300 range, or motherboards that can cost $400, $500, $600 or even more. It's just these two extremes like the current American political system with no middle ground apart from one exception, the ASUS Turf Gaming X670e Plus, which can be all yours right now for just $316, making it one of the cheaper X670e motherboards you can buy. Naturally, there are still some cheaper X670 motherboards that beat it in price, such as the X670 Aeros Elite, which we already covered on this channel, or the ASUS Prime, which we also covered, though interestingly, it's even cheaper than some B650 models we covered, such as the B650e Aeros Master. So how well does this motherboard do its job as the in betweeny one. While starting off with CPU power, here you have 14 plus 2 phases, running at a maximum of 70 amps, which is nothing impressive. In fact, it gets even beaten out by standard X670 boards, and naturally it has nothing on the more high-end X670e motherboards either. But it still should be more than enough for most people, even if you're running a 7950X, and it still has two full 8 pins for CPU power, so your CPU will be very well fed. But that just begs the question, why is this an X670e motherboard in the first place? X670e motherboards are supposed to be a cream of the crop, but this one really doesn't feel like it. But it looks like ASUS actually realised how dumb this naming strategy that AMD came up with actually is, seeing how they don't even really make that many X670 non-E motherboards. And it looks like they tried to simplify stuff by making everything X670e which has the added benefit of this motherboard having all the extra features that you would expect from X670e, such as a primary 16x Gen 5 slot for your graphics card. Add to that another physical 16x but actually 4x slot at the bottom of the board, and ooh, look at that! An actual 4x slot! A PCIe slot that is actually very close to extinction right now, but it's still very useful, a lot of cards still running it. And in addition to that, you get a plethora of M.2 storage options, seeing how you have a primary PC Gen 5 slot, two additional Gen 4 slots, and an additional slot that only does Gen 3. So that is all very, very good stuff. But what about the rear I.O.? Well here things get very interesting, because you have a whopping 8 USB Type-A ports in total, which sure definitely doesn't dethrone the USB Type-A king that is Gigabyte, but it still should be more than enough for most normal people. And what makes it even better is the fact that none of them are USB Gen 2, they are all lightning fast Gen 3 ports or better, though I still kind of wish they added just two more USB Gen 2 ports for 10 total, with one for your mouse and one for your keyboard. But instead they figured that that space would be better used for an ASUS Tough logo, which you can't even see because it's at the back of the PC. And if that's not enough connectivity, you also get two USB Type-C ports at the back, one 10 gigabit and another 20 gigabit. Something you just simply don't see a lot of at this price point. Add to that 2.5 gig Ethernet, Wi-Fi 6E, integrated display port and HDMI, and not 6, but rather 5 audio jacks. Because once again, ASUS seem to think that it's more important to awkwardly put in a BIOS flashback switch there instead of a 6th audio jack or optical SPDIF. I still have absolutely no idea why that's there, unless the rear panel for this motherboard was assembled blind, but it's still better than Gigabyte motherboards, which still only offer you free audio jacks, and it's all powered by the Realtek S1220A codec, making this overall a pretty good choice for your upcoming Ryzen 7000 build. Granted, at over $300, it's definitely not the cheapest, but at that point, naturally you go B650 rather than X670 or X670E. This motherboard, however, is kind of special, because even though it's priced more like an X670 board, it has the features of an X670E one, which essentially just means that you get the best of both worlds. So congrats ASUS, you officially beat me. You made a motherboard where you actually struggled to think of too many things to critique about. Let me know what address I should send your gold star sticker to. And if you want to get this motherboard yourself, then make sure to use our Amazon links down in the video description below, because that way you don't pay anything extra while we get some money back so we can reinvest it in this channel to hopefully make it a bit less, well, amateurish. And speaking of making it less amateurish, if you want to help support the tech journalism we do here, then make sure to check out our Patreon, because even a single dollar a month truly really goes a long way, well you get awesome perks as well. I'd also like to thank my existing patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, Oki B, Justin Rage, Ella Vroniak, Vardash Roka, Meg Zumna, Shane Allcroft, Lansby and Jesse Herbman. Thank you guys so so much, support truly goes a long way. 
down here so you can find our merch store, our Discord server, and our social media links as well. But anyway, that's what it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all and whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.